So very recently I have been sent this, which is a kit for a DLT-19 heavy blaster rifle, something you see the Sand Troopers on Tatooine carry around a lot. And this is from a little company called Stardust Industries who have only just started producing these kits. So as a means of disclosure, I gotta say they did get in contact with me and said, do you mind if we send you a kit for free, if you would put it together and give us some feedback on, you know, how well the kit goes together, if there needs to be any improvements with certain parts of it, and and if there needs to be any changes made in the instructions to make it easier for people in the future. So I said, hell yes, and they're okay with me doing a review up on this channel. So I'm very much looking forward to putting this together and hopefully I will definitely be able to recommend it to you guys. This kit is £95 from their Facebook site. I'll put a link down in the description below. And we've got a menagerie of kind of different parts here. So we've got um, wooden pieces, got a bit of copper pipes, some plastic pipes, some metal parts cast resin pieces, a vacuum form plastic, laser cut wood and uh, just some other, this looks like a little bit of laser cut sort of plastic and just some other piping and also comes with the, uh, the correct attachments and screws. What is nice on the front is they have put a list of the contents and checked it all off so you know that you're going to be getting everything in the kit and you should not be missing anything because that's always a worry when you buy a kit is there's going to be a piece that has wandered off somewhere or maybe in delivery has fallen out of the box or something and as well as other um, materials that you're going to need during this build and it's quite, quite a long little instruction booklet they try to make it as detailed as they can so this is essentially going to be like adult Lego. So I've laid everything out. Pretty much the same as on here. Just so I know what all these parts are. So obviously they're all numbered and in the instruction booklet they're all numbered so you know which pieces are going to go together. Got nice little little graphs on here. It is essentially like a slight Lego and full written instructions as well. I do recommend you read through the instructions before you start, which I have done. So now I'm going to get started, but I'd uh, the, fir the first instruction is put the kettle on, but I don't drink tea or coffee, so I've, I've, I've got juice. That's the stuff. Okay, so the first steps we've got is preparation. So, with kits, most of the time things come out of a cast raw, so there is uh, no clean-up on them, so it is your job to clean it up. That's why kits are a lot cheaper than finished blasters. So the first one we've got to do is we've got to glue together two halves of the muzzle, which is these two pieces. So for most of it, I'm probably going to be hand sanding, but for certain bits, I uh, might get the Dremel out just to make sure it's all nicely cleaned up. parts have now been sanded and eaten up. It did take a couple of hours to go over everything. Some bits have still got like a tiny little bit of imperfections on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this outside and give it a quick go over with primer and then whilst that's drying I'm actually going to start uh, sanding down the main wooden body. See this is uh, sort of the handle. And it just needs a little bit of sanding just to sort of even out obviously where these uh, layers have gone together. One of them is a little bit higher than the other. pieces have been filled, sanded, and there's some primer on them as well. So there's some of them that do need a fair bit of work, or at least on mine, because every pull is going to be different when it comes to resin. Uh, this is one that had the most imperfections, so as you can see it's not perfect at the moment, but it's as clean as I could get it for now. 
and uh, when it's painted it shouldn't prove too much of a problem. Now it's done, I can actually move on to the assembly, but we're, we're, following, we're following the instructions so I'm not skipping ahead. So the next part we've got this, which is the outer barrel coupler, which I'm just double checking against my reference. Yes it is. And it says use the template included at the end of the manual to drill holes in this. So at the end of the manual they printed off a couple of templates. So this is the outer barrel uh, template. It's the one that says receiver side but it doesn't indicate which side is the receiver side. Uh, it does look like these bits in the, uh, the middle here are well properly in the middle so it shouldn't matter which side is the receiver side. I guess it's just a case of pick a side and go for it. So because the holes are going to be more one side of the uh, the tube than they are the other. And then more at the top. Just a little bit of masking tape on there. We're going to have to find a drill bit that is a 3mm. Yeah, looks pretty even. And uh, now there is a, a bit of writing on there that I have to get rid of, so just have to sit and sand that off. Okay, all that's been sanded off. Now the next bit, according to the instructions, is uh, this, which is the stock. See, the stock is uh, two separate vacuum bomb pieces, which go together like that. And we've got to cut the end out, so I'm just going to use uh, the rotary tool on my Dremel. Alright, so now that's done, we get to move on to the main construction. So this is going to be all the lovely wooden parts. So I've got my wood adhesive, a little bit of scrap plastic, you can use as a spreader. And what bits do we need? We're going to get these little laser cut pieces. These are really nicely done. So there's the bits all uh, taped on. I'm just going to leave that for a little bit to dry before I start fiddling about with it. But uh, on the instructions on the second one down there, it's not entirely clear on the picture where those parts go, but you can just about make it out. But for anyone who, who can't quite see that, it's uh, the lid does come with two extra little pieces and they just go on the side here under that little three hole lid decoration. So if you couldn't quite see where they were on the photo, that's where they go. So whilst that is drying, just going to skip ahead a few bits of the instructions because the rest of it pertains to uh, screwing on the uh, other parts for this. We're actually going to move on to the front sight. So we get this lovely barrel here, complete with a, a working foldable stock. So that's off camera, isn't it? There we go. You can see. It's probably not something I'd ever do in costume because it's going to be a bit fiddly, but for photos and stuff, you can get out and go, look, look, I've, I've got I've got an actual foldable thing because I'm one of the few troopers who can actually go prone in a suit of armour. So I'm just going to give this barrel a very light sand down, just with a bit of a fine wet and dry, just so when it comes to painting, I know the paint's definitely going to stick and it will just help with sticking these parts on because I'm going to use my trusty five minute epoxy over using hot glue for this because well, hot glue does work, it won't last as long and it's not as strong as epoxy. Alright, so here's our main barrel. We've just got a couple of bits that haven't quite dried yet, so they're still taped on, but Everything is nice and solidly in place, so whilst that's drying, we're going to go back to our wooden parts here. It does say dry overnight, but it seems to have dried. It's quite sturdy. I'll still keep it taped up to make sure it's not moving too much, but uh, as it's been left for a couple of hours, it should be sturdy enough that we can actually drill it. We've got to add in some of the screws. Now, lots of screws have come with this, so I've got to make sure... Um, I get the right ones out. Right, so this is the screw we need. So this is E, which is a pan head self-tapping screw, six millimeter by 20 millimeter. That's gotta go 
in that hole there. I do not have a 5mm drill bit, I have checked, so we're going to have to use a 3mm drill bit and give it a bit of a wiggle, because that's how we, that's how we do it. get around to actually attaching some of the resin pieces so it looks like we've got this one and this one to go on. Right, this is where I'm going to use the uh, kind of like little Lego-ish sort of pictures just to make sure I definitely know where they're going. So both of these are now screwed in place. That was a lot more fiddly than expected, but they're on. And uh, right, the next step is we're actually gonna start sticking the barrel to this. So we gotta mark an X in the middle of the, uh, the handle to find the center point. Right, and we gotta take one of the G screws, which is one of these shorter ones and two L brackets, I assume they're all identical. Right, so now we're going to take two of these, which are U-clips, and slide them on so the flat side is on the outside. The outer barrel coupler, that's this piece that we sanded and drilled earlier. It's got to go over the L brackets with the two drilled holes nearest the receiver. We've hit a snag with uh, putting on the uh, barrel coupler. One, the instructions don't say which hole to go into, so I didn't know if it would be flush to the receiver or sitting off the receiver. And two, the little bits on the inside of the barrel means that no matter what angle I put it on, I can't get it flush to the receiver because it just doesn't want to fit. So, as this is a review and it was to see if there's any faults or things that can be improved, I'm messaging the, uh, the guy who makes them. And, um, we're seeing if we can find a solution. Okay, cool. So we got a reply saying that um, the holes for the brackets should go between the lugs on the inside. The plan should say to mark and drill with the coupler in position over the brackets. It says, as I've already drilled it, I can go ahead and grind away the inner rings where it hits the brackets. So these aren't going to be like something that's needed in the later part of the build. So I can just go ahead and remove that. But there we go, we found something. I have my uses. Because if anyone's gonna break stuff, it's me. All right, there you go. That's what the coupler looks like with it screwed on. So it's the, the double holes on the side. You wanna go for the lower one so it sits flush to there. Cool, right, that's on, that's sturdy. All right, so before we go any further, now that I'm happy with the fact that the wood glue has dried enough, I don't think it's going to react to anything now. It's had that extra couple of hours while we've been attaching other stuff. I'm actually going to go and prime the wood, so I have like gone forward and back in the uh, the uh, steps a little bit, but time management. So um, yeah, I'm just probably just going to cover the plastic bits just so they don't get the wood primer on there. And uh, uh, I couldn't find any of the stuff that the actual uh, instructions recommend. So I've got this stuff. This is uh, a primer and sealer. This is the best thing I could find in my local B&Q. And uh, it comes out white, so essentially I can see if there's any bits that do need a bit of uh, evening out on the body before we start putting them together. So uh, that's going to be done first. But yeah, I've got to mask up the, the plastic bits just so they don't get this on there. So that wood primer is on. It sort of picked up all the little kind of fluffy bits on the wood. It's made it a lot easier to sand off. So now I've sanded it fairly smooth. I'm just gonna get some filler and just fill in obviously some of the gaps that are still between uh, these uh, three wooden pieces. And just try and get it as smooth as I can. I'm 
I'm going to put the stock together because that's going to need a fair bit of work to get it all to line up nicely. So see we've got the two halves, vacuum form plastic and we've got some of this which is um, aluminium mesh. I'm just going to clean up the edges of this and the aluminium mesh is essentially going to go on the inside here. So it's, you're going to kind of connect it like that so it's got support in there. But we also have to attach it to uh, the rear stock tube. So that's going to go in here. And these two tiny bits which we glued together at the beginning of the build, which will be dry now, so well, they, they better be, they've been sitting in there for a long time, will be uh, essentially pillows. All right, so let's do this thing. Okay, all nice and sanded, another layer of that wood primer on the top. It's not perfect, but it's uh, a lot better and once it's sprayed black, it won't be as bad. I mean, you could spend hours and hours trying to get it perfect. Sanding does take over your life, but I'm happy with that, that it's neat enough, that I don't think it needs a huge amount more doing to it, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there, I'll let you spend the entire evening sanding. So now I just need to put a little epoxy down the front barrel just to make sure that this is definitely secure. But I am running out of my normal epoxy. I do have this stuff, which is basically really strong epoxy. So I'm just going to use that for the inside of here. Okay, hopefully that should be enough because this stuff is like super strong. So uh, quickly grab the barrel and align it to make sure this thing doesn't go wonky. Straight, I mean, I hope it's straight. You got all the mesh glued in, got our rear stock tube with both the pillar blocks on, so that one just slots in there, and we're going to glue the pillar blocks to the stock. So that barrel connection is pretty much set now. So last bit of gluing I can do tonight is uh, this little insert that's got to go in here. Right. So now got to carefully glue that in without trying to move it. Might have to super glue that in because I can't quite reach. All right now. Fingers crossed, that is not gonna go anywhere. There we go, you can just see the copper tube in the middle. Nice. All right, now that's in, I can fit the front of the muzzle in as well. Managed to epoxy and super glue the uh, rear of the stock together so it's not moving around there's some bits that are kind of like moving a little so i'm probably just going to fill that in with a bit more super glue and then sand these bits down just so they match up a bit better and then put some body filler on it it's just this corner that i'm worried about because movement with body filler means the filler will crack so it's just that corner that i want to glue a bit more so just more sanding that's what we've got to do today just that bit more sanding and I'll probably put some fill around there as well. Make sure it looks all nice and pretty. So now we've got the last of the resin pieces to put on. This is the rear sight assembly and then we've got the bolt. No, the bolt will go on last because it's got on there. So we're going to put this on and figure out which way around these go. So that one goes on to the barrel coupler on the end of here.
than sounded, the last bit of filler I'm gonna do on this because oh my god, so much filler. And uh, we've now got to cut out the template for this because this is actually a little bit too long for the stock. So we're gonna cut it down to the size of this and we've got two little areas where we've got to drill to put in the screws and that can be attached to the main body and then we can prime and get ready for paint which is my favorite bit of any build. I love painting so I've sanded the whole of the stock down because it's quite a shiny plastic to make sure the paint does stick because if there's anything that's going to get damaged a lot I reckon it's the stock so obviously I want to keep it looking as good as possible. Okay Stock is on, that was a bit trickier than anticipated because um, the L brackets were a little bit too wide for the actual tube. So I had to grab one of them and hammer it just to bend it in a little bit so it just fits in there. And it is making the tube sort of go at more of an oval shape than a round shape. But it's on there and I think it might be splitting the filler on top but not too bad. And that's the... It's the full body now complete. Look at that. She's big. She's big gun. Right, so now we've got this all together. I'm just going to sand a couple of the bits I haven't sanded and make sure everything is all ready for paint and we can get one layer of primer going on this. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do anything else tonight, but that means tomorrow, which is the final day before the day of the photo shoot, I can get this painted. So I'm not going to be in an absolute massive rush, which is nice. I'm just going to use some of my nice fine wet and dry sandpaper just to go over everything so it doesn't mark it too much. It's just the plastic and a little bit of the metal that I'm worried about it sticking to, just areas where I think it's going to rub. Don't want the paint to come off too much. So here is the final paint job with a, a few extra scuffs as uh, this is filmed after it's been on its first troop so there's a few dings here and there but just managed to get the paint job done in time so you can see all the kind of like mottling of the paint over here because I didn't want it just to be a, a flat colour I actually wanted it to have some depth to it and a little bit of texture so just by depressing on the uh, the top of the spray can just making it come out in like little bursts means kind of you get this uneven texture. And because it's my blaster, it's obviously going to have a little bit of weathering on it. So I just took some very fine wet and dry sandpaper and sprayed some aluminium on there. So it sort of scratches it up and the sandpaper does dull some of the paint around the area that I'm kind of adding the aluminium on to. So you've got like a little bit of just grey where it's taken some of the shine off the paint as well as the silver. It's just like little details, but it's enough that for a quick paint job to get it ready for the troop has actually worked out really really nicely. Now you can see just on the side here I've added a little bit of aura beige because I wanted to name the blast. I wasn't sure what to name it so after my group this has been named Outlander. So that is the completed Stardust Industries DLT 19 kit. This isn't 100% screen accurate but it's pretty damn close. It's quite a nice little kit. From start to finish it took me a week to build that's like two full days and a couple of evenings on it. Some bits were fairly fiddly, like getting the, the bolts in the rear stock to be able to line up and actually being able to line up uh, the parts that screw onto the receiver. But nothing that was hugely problematic. The one thing that I did notice on the troop was when I was carrying it, uh, this one uh, for the bipod, this little strap did keep sort of coming off. Which well, typical, I can't get it to do now. But yeah, so when I'm walking around and trying to carry stuff and that bit flicks out, it's a little bit annoying. Especially when you're trying to do a photo shoot and you've got to keep putting it back on when you can't see because you've got a Stormtrooper helmet. So I'm trying to get it on like that. But I do know that he's working on actually improving the bipods. I mean, they're not bad. They do their job. I used it for the photo, but it's just that one side keeps coming off quite easily. So it's something that I might be able to fix myself. I just have to look a little bit further into it. But for the price, as it's £95 for the kit, 
it's not a bad kit and it is fairly lightweight. Say so the the main weight is in the receiver because it's solid wood and you've got resin cast pieces, but all the resin cast pieces are hollow, so you don't have a lot of really heavy weight, which for when you're trooping is nice because you get to move it about and you don't ache so much carrying it. I mean, it's just fairly easy just to move it. So if you're in the market for a DLT-19, I would definitely recommend this. Again, it's a little bit of work if you're someone who's more experienced with doing stuff. Again, I've not actually done a blaster kit before. This is my first kit, so like I said, it took me a week to do. So depending on how much time you've got, it might take you a couple of weeks if you've never really done anything buildy like this before, or it might take a little bit less time. But I'm really pleased that I've got this. I finally got my DLT after all this time, and it looked really, really cool in our photo shoot, which there will be a video of that already up or up after this one, depending on which one I get done first. So thank you very much for watching, and obviously thank you Stardust Industries for trusting me to do a review and sending me uh, this kit for free. It is a beautiful little gun, and I will treasure it. Also, as always, big thanks has to go out to my supporters on on Patreon and two of those who have pledged to have their name shouted out on my video so thank you very much to Jeff Kenny and more Tarion for continuing to support this channel. As always thank you guys for watching and I will be back with some more build and event videos very soon so as always may the force be with you.